It's called EPI, a condition underrecognized and underdiagnosed. Welcome to the first of our three part behind the mystery rare and genetic diseases. Our focus today, exocrine pancreatic insufficiency or EPI. Today we're talking with Dr. Bob Edamod, a gastroenterologist from Lankinaw Medical Center based in Wynwood, Pennsylvania. And later on, we're gonna be joined by a woman who's been dealing with EPI. She's gonna share her very special story. So first we join the doctor. Good morning, sir. Good morning. It's Thank you so much be for being here. Thank you very much. You know, this is something very rare. I've heard of it. I'm not very much aware of it. So tell me exactly what EPI is. Yeah, so the pancreas is an organ that produces proteins that help you digest your food. When the pancreas doesn't produce enough of those proteins, you have exocrine pancreatic insufficiency, or EPI. And then what, when, when you just talked about what causes it, when you do get that EPI, what are you feeling? What are the symptoms? Yes, so most often it's diarrhea. Okay. It's going to be some weight loss that's not explained. And those are primarily, some abdominal pain can come as well. So it's really not something that you don't feel because sometimes the symptoms can be minor. You're really noticing that something is wrong. You can have subtle symptoms, uh, and that is where a doctor often is going to help make the diagnosis. But when it's, when it's bad, you're going to have pretty obvious symptoms. Yes. And if you have yeah. obvious symptoms, doctor, why is this so often, let's say, overlooked or underdiagnosed? Because it is rare. It is because the symptoms mimic a lot of other things. For example, weight loss, people might think their weight loss is related to maybe a change in their diet, or it may be related to a change in their activity. Some people have changes in their bowel movements and they think, well, I'm, I'm having a little trouble here and it goes away and comes back again. So the symptoms are not specific. And when it comes to the numbers, and I'm not sure you have the data on this, but is it one out of 10 people? How, how common is this? That's a great question. So right now, we think that it's probably somewhere around 23 per 100,000 people have obvious chronic pancreatitis, which is a problem where the pancreas is sort of scarred down. But the actual numbers of who has EPI is really an unknown because we don't really test that many people regularly for EPI. But before I toss to break, and I always like to end on a high note, there is some hope out there for patients that are suffering from this, right? There's hope both for diagnosis and for treatment, yes. Excellent. So stay right there, doctor, because we're going to talk about that hope. We're also going to talk to a very special woman who has been suffering from EPI. She's a patient who's going to share her story, so don't go away. There's much more to come. Stay right there. Welcome back, everyone. We've been talking with Dr. Bob Edamod, a gastroenterologist from Lankenau Medical Center in Pennsylvania. And joining us now this morning is Rhonda Ayala, an EPI patient who's been dealing with her condition since 2010. Yes. Thank you so much for being here. Thank you for having me. Doctor, thank you for staying with us. Rhonda, tell me exactly what was going on that you knew something was wrong. You were obviously having symptoms. Yeah, I was. I was having, you know, terrible cramps and, um, I was having diarrhea uh -huh. and a uh, little out there, but you know, I was looking in the, the potty after and there's oil in there and I just really? knew something was wrong. Yeah, it just wasn't right. And let me tell you, I mean, I, my dad has always told me everybody should be yeah. looking in the toilet Absolutely. after they go to the bathroom, yeah. but not only just what you saw, but I mean, what you were feeling was just horrendous. Oh yeah, it was horrible. It was re really bad cramps, and really bad, like, like out of the ordinary. Not normal. Not normal, not normal. So what were you finally diagnosed with? EPI. Well, you know, I, I went to the doctor and told him what was going on and everything. And, um, you know, a lot of doctors don't know. Mm -hmm. So it's hard to, to get to the right doc who can recognize what it is because it's so rare. So you had to go to several ones. So I went to a GI doctor and, and was telling him what was going on and he recognized, you know, the symptoms. Doctor, are there some people who are higher risk than others? There are. Uh, people that have obvious, if they've had a resection of their pancreas or surgery of their pancreas, there's that group. There are some people whose families have known pancreas problems, patients that have cystic fibrosis, either themselves or even in the family, they might have a risk. Um, and then there are some people who have certain autoimmune diseases that might also be at risk. So there are a number of categories of people that might be at higher risk. Let me ask you something, Rhonda. Yeah. Just as a woman, I need to ask you this question. When you heard the diagnosis, again, it's rare. Yeah. Were you scared? I mean, something you haven't heard of? Well, yeah, and nobody wants to hear anything's wrong with your pancreas, mm -hmm. you know, so it, that's like an important organ to have, I think. Absolutely. You know? So, um, yeah, I was concerned. I was concerned, and, and more important, okay, what are we gonna do with this now? 
And what would you tell viewers out there who may be suffering from some of these symptoms and they're maybe clueless about what it is? Well, the thing is sometimes people get very shy about talking to their doctor about stuff. So, you know, the doctor-patient relationship is so important and it should be like, you know, no holes barred when you're in that room and, and uh, tell your doctor. And no doubt about it, doctor, and I've heard this from a lot of patients in the past that even when one doctor maybe can't diagnose what you have, normally the patient really knows there's something wrong. They really do. Follow your gut. Mm -hmm. I think the point being made here is that you really, one, the doctor has that responsibility to certainly hear out the patient, but the patient really has the, should not be afraid to talk about some of these things that might be a little bit less commonly talked about right, even right, among doctors. Right. So I think that your point is very well taken and I yeah. think it should well, be. Well society's made this, you know, thing about talking about that, you know, but, you know, you're in there for help. That's what I needed help. So And that's great advice because you always have to have that line of communication open between the doctor and patient yeah. and especially when it comes to your health and your right. life. And if you're not comfortable with that doctor, go find somebody else. And get a know? second opinion. And yeah. even a third and fourth I always yeah, tell people. Absolutely. Doctor, any last bits of advice you would give somebody out there? I think that uh, remembering that the pancreas is an organ that can be forgiving for a while, mm -hmm. but I think that once you're beginning to manifest some of these signs of, mm -hmm. of a weight loss that's unexplained, crampy abdominal pain that you haven't had before, diarrhea that's really outside what would be considered normal for that particular person, it really is time to look, and if your doctor is not giving you the answer you're looking for, Look, look, look a again. little further. Yes. And, and speaking yeah. of looking, where can our viewers go to maybe search out more information on EPI? There are many resources available on the internet. One place you might want to start would be identifyepi.com. Okay, identifyepi.com. That's right. Thank you so much, doctor. Pleasure. Great information. Pleasure. Great thank having you. Very you. Much for having I'm you. so glad you're doing nice great. You. you look marvelous, by the way, too. Oh, thank you, Dudley. Good luck to you. <laughs> and this has been our first in a series on EPI. Be sure to join us again for more Behind the Mystery Rare and Genetic Diseases as we continue to examine this important topic. In the meantime, visit us at thebalancingact.com to find out more or share with us anything EPI or related conditions at Facebook forward slash thebalancingact. Thanks. <laughs>